When the Gohen Gadol, Gohen Gadol, he goes in the Kodesh Kodeshim on Yom Kippur. He has a golden chain tied to his leg. Why? Because if he will die inside, they could pull him out. Scary answer. Why would he die? Why, what might cause his death? Even an innocent thought that was not directly connected to Hashem's service that he was performing. He had a small, uh, unrelated thought. Imagine during Amidah how many unrelated thoughts we have. A small, unrelated thought. That's it. Boom. He dropped. They were pulling the chain. Is he okay? Is he okay? Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. He doesn't go. He doesn't pull back. That's it. He died. So every year, the entire Jewish nation would wait in suspense. When he goes into the Kodesh Kodeshim, they would be in suspense. I hope he doesn't die. I hope that he emerges and he's able to get us kapara. There was a period of years when the Kohen Gadol died every Yom Kippur. And a special cemetery was made for these Kohen Gadolim. Now, Rav Yagin says he has a question. Kohen Gadol number 29 saw the Kohen Gadol 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. He saw all of their... Graves in this graveyard. What was he thinking? Well, he's, if he's not worthy, right? We, some people used to buy the Keuna. They used to buy Kohen Gadol. Haz Shalom. Because they were uh, not righteous people in charge of the of, of, of Israel. So what happened? You saw this guy went to Kodesh Kodeshim and he died. And you saw the guy year after him. Then you saw next year the guy after him. And you still tried to be Kohen Gadol. Like, what's going through your mind? Why'd you take this risk? Same with the question of lies, the coin number 30, coin number 31. If they saw the predecessors die, what were they thinking? It must be that every coin Gadol was convinced that I am righteous. I'm different than that guy. That guy is a bad guy, but I'm a good guy. So therefore what? Though they had this problem, they had this problem, they had that problem. Me? I'm a tzaddik. I'm perfect. I'm right. Nothing will happen to me. Don't worry about. And what? He went in. And he died. You should know that we're not so different. We come to Yom Kippur. Rabbi, you're crying. Why are you crying? Hazan, why are you crying? Wow, the guy next to me was crying so much. What is there to cry about? I don't understand. Oh, Yom Kippur, you're crying about what sins? What do we have to ask for? Hashem, I don't know what, what, what I have to do to Shuma about. So a person, Hazan Shalom, can think, I'm a tzaddik. I don't need to cry. What do I need to cry? What sins do I have? I'm perfect. I'm a tzaddik. Just like the Kohen Gadolim. Why are we so sure of ourselves? That's the question. We have to learn. The Torah warns. Even a king of Israel cannot be too sure of himself. The Torah requires he has to carry his own personal Sefer Torah. And has to be with him at all times. When he goes to war, when he sits in judgment, and he eats, even he eats dinner, it shall be with him. He shall read it from it. So that he will learn to fear Hashem. So you see, even the king who has everything and we think to be the most comfortable person. He has to always not be sure of himself. No less than King Shlomo. King Shlomo was the wisest of people. And what? The Gemara said in Masechet Yisharmi, the Sanhedrin, says when they listed the three kings and the four regular people who don't have Halak Allah Maba, right? Like uh, Yeravah ben Navad and King Menashe and so on and so forth. They want to include in that list King Shlomo. He should also not have portion of the world to come. He be why? So he, the 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 story with him and how he took Queen of Sheba, right? He took uh, Bat Paro and he married her, and she, they were all doing Avodah Zarah in his house. So because of this, they wanted to say that uh, he should have no halak alamaba. The wisest of men, author of Kohelet, author of Shira Shirim, they wanted to blacklist him. Why? Because he said the Torah says, "Don't marry too many wives, lest they'll turn away your heart." He said, what? I'll marry a lot of wives and they won't turn away my heart. Meaning, I'm above the law. It's okay. I'm a tzaddik. I'm better than that. I'm not going to fall. And he was sure of himself. And what? He almost was in the list of the people who lose the halakha al-Abba. The Gemara says the only reason they didn't proclaim that he lose the halakha al-Abba is because King David came from Gan Eden and cried before them, please do not write that my son has no share world to come. Only because of that. You see? The power of being so sure of yourself. You could be the wisest of men and Hans Shalom, you could also fall. So how much uh, do we have to sit down 
with ourselves before Yom Kippur and, and go through what do we have to work on. You have to go see, there's tremendous amount of what we have to cry about. And you have to sit and prepare. Because if you don't come to prepare uh, with Yom Kippur, you're going to, you have to show you be that guy. No, when is it over? How many pages left? Oh, look, we're almost there. I'm so hungry. If you're really busy connecting to Yom Kippur, you'll have no room and no space in your mind to think about how hungry you are and how many minutes left, how many pages left. You're going to be busy begging Hashem for to start over with you. Therefore, he says that the, he remembers a story of a young widow where six children who came to his office and started to cry. He said, I thought she was crying about her difficulties and maybe she was, uh, maybe should she remarry, maybe she not. I tr he said he tried to comfort her. And all of a sudden she said, I know that my husband is near Kisei Akavod. He was a tzaddik and he was a Torah scholar. I'm crying because I'm so ashamed that heaven sees what we argued about. Hashem will show each tzaddik in Gan Eden every deed you did in this world. It will be a documentary of your life in front of your family members and your friends, what you did your entire life, and there's no uh, skip ad. There's no skipping. There's no... Uh, uh, don't look, you're going to just sit through it. And what? Some of uh, you'll see our arguments, or the words we said, the actions we did, the wasted time of our moments of life, and we will cry in shame. But you could avoid that, you could erase that. You know how you could erase that? It's called Teshuvah. If you go on Yom Kippur, you cry, you won't have to cry over there. You cry now, you ask Hashem now, Hashem could do a director's cut. You can make edit it to this. And what? Problem is, we don't think about this. We think about when, when when's my next uh, plof? When's my next bagel? When is the fast over? When we hear shofar? When, uh, is my seat comfortable? Are you sitting in my seat? What, what, how, oh, he bought parnasa, he bought neila. We're busy with whatever it may be, just so that Satan does not want us to focus on asking mehila and kapara from Hashem. And therefore, we have to make sure not to fall into this trap. Utilize it. The Rizal says, the student of Moshe Galanti. You transgressed the prohibition of stealing today. So the student said, what Rabbi, Hasa Shalom, what are you saying? He said, I see it, I see it on your forehead. I see the sins you did. He says, what? So they explained to me what happened today. And Moshe Galanti said, good morning. He said, I sell thread, I sell fabric. So every evening he would pay the woman who sewed the fabric for him. Now he went to each of their homes and he asked, you know, now he feels bad. He goes to these people and he said, did I take something from you? Did I forget to pay you? My rabbi said, I stole from somebody. So he said, I produce higher quality threads, but you pay me the same price like the other guy. So Rav Moshe right away paid her the extra amount. I feel bad. I'm sorry. Did I didn't know you thought you deserved more. And the Arizal said, now the sign left you for it. Now the stealing went away. So you see that the real Sadiqim see on our forehead all our sins. And Hashem sees in our heart in our soul, all our sins. We may not see it. We may forget about it, but it's there. And if you don't ask for mechila and do teshuvah one by one, you gotta do confession. You know what confession means? Say to Hashem, I did this sin, I did that sin. Be specific. You just why you think? Why, why can't Yom Kippur be five minutes and just come, everybody come? Hashem, mechila madam, mechila koned, and then we all go home. Why not? Why not? No, you have to go each one and confess and do teshuvah and feel bad. There's 613 mitzvot. We have a lot to speak about. There's a tremendous opportunity here. Don't let it pass by. Baruch na'olam.